Thank you, folks from the media, for joining us today. This time we'll have our third budget workshop. Ms. Smith, call your yeah. Go right ahead. Jump right in. Now we'll refer to your notebook. <coughs> Of course, page one is our summary page of all categories. And what I brought you today, unfortunately, the first section is 65 pages, but don't panic. Um, what I did was every summary page for every section I have brought back because the salary adjustments we had discussed have all been worked in. The state's uh, $3,000 change to the state salary schedule plus the local portion on our end has been included in this budget. Um, so we'll just go through. Um, uh, we have not presented instruction, so I'm going to go through instruction and improvement of instruction. Those two categories have not previously been presented, nor had uh, any of the special revenue. So I'm going to hit those. The rest of it, um, I just brought back the summary pages so you could see the salary and benefit changes that were caused by the salary and benefit changes since last time. Okay, so let's go to page two. This is the summary instruction, instructional budget. This is where all of our teachers, pair, uh, instructional pair pros, um, most of our technology specialists, our counselors um, are all housed in this section. In the top section, of course, you see salary and benefits. Um, it is a 4.54% increase. It does include the $3,000 state schedule increase for certified staff. Um, currently, our local schedule we use those state numbers plus we add a 10 percent local supplement we have held to that in this case uh, so we will have to ask for your approval um, on that schedule at a later time as long as um, y'all are pleased with what we're presenting today um, the only positions that we are increasing are pair pros um, since we are moving dova and we've had dova this year and it's been a little different situation than we've had before we are asking for this addition of one pair pro to provide uh, clerical and instructional support in that building uh, they would also support virtual school if needed but most of the time i believe it would be in the dova area um, um, with the um, instructional area now do y'all have questions each each object code is assigned by the state as you see teachers pair pros each one has a specific code as do the benefits um, we are not requesting any additional teaching positions we had a break even this year um, at the moment we are watching kindergarten closely um, i believe our, our pre-k has fleshed out which you'll see in special revenue um, like I said, the only area that I'm aware of that we are actually asking for an increase in staff, and you would also see that as a new position when it comes across the PAR and board meetings, that it is a new position for a pair pro. So for pair pros, exactly how much is that per hour for a pair pro? Okay, what we have proposed, or what we have prepared in here is um, in all but a couple of areas, and I want to wait just a few minutes to get to those areas, all non-certified, we're recommending a $1 an hour increase to their current salary, with the exception of bus drivers who we gave a $2 an hour increase last year, but the proposal is a 2%. The state gave a 2% state transportation salary increase, but we want to do a 2% overall that captures local and state, just so it's an, an even 2% for them. And that's in a, would that 2% be in addition? For non certified staff in addition to the one dollar no, in that that is just for bus drivers since bus drivers got two dollars an hour last year and the rest of the staff did not we did a one dollar an hour for all the other staff and then that two percent across the board state and local increase for bus drivers then food service it's in special revenue and i want to hold that thought uh, what the request is because we're losing instructional days for them that means it costs them money in revenue if you don't serve the kids you don't make money um, she wants to do a 75 cent for the uh, increase for her school food service workers and a dollar an hour increase for the managers so that is her proposal does that include all Pardon? does that include all even the ones that are no longer have have as far as the schedule they're out of the schedule now i guess or have met their limit i don't know what the couple we talked about salary schedule salary schedule um oh yeah we are we are going to pull the schedule out to uh, what had been requested that is a little different issue but you wanted to pull the schedule out from 25 years to 30 i've incorporated that in here too so 
and it's all incorporated in here, so I'm, I'm trying gotcha. to get all the pieces here. With the salaries, um, like I said, all non-certified, non-administrative positions would, we are requesting a dollar an hour increase with exception of bus drivers only. So that is monitors and uh, the mechanics and uh, what the office staff is, we're gonna have all brand new people there, full brand new folks coming in there. So their salaries are coming through y'all. So it'll be whatever y'all approve for them. Um, and then food service would be 75 cents for food service workers and then a dollar for managers and the bookkeeper. Does that make sense? And I'm gonna go through this a little little more in detail here. I might be getting ahead too, but the, on the back of the 3,000, State certified. What positions did? What certified staff positions were not included on the three thousand? Um, they went back and captured them all. The only one, only certified folks we have that are not on that schedule, we call them on contract, and that tip most of the time is just central office folks. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, our food service director is no is not on that schedule, although she is a certified member. Um, our curriculum folks are off that schedule. So the recommendation for them is just to match the teachers, which will equate to 3,300. Is there many that will be grouped in that, or is it a small group? It's a very small group. It's about, I have my list, I can tell you. It's going to be less than 12. Well, what we're actually doing is, with y'all's approval, we are asking that every employee in our school system will receive some sort of increase Absolutely. in the rates. Uh, the minimum would be 2%. And the maximum would be up to 3300 Well, well yeah, a, a 12 month person, like a, I'll give you an example, a principal is on a 12 month contract, but they are attached to the salary schedule, so they get 3000 state base increase, and then $300 locally per month. So you're going to get 300 to go over here with your 10 months, so that's 3,300 just like the teachers. But the 11th and 12th months generate another 300 for each one, so they will actually receive 3,900. So if you have a 12 month person attached to the schedule, because if you've got them attached to the schedule and you change the schedule, that's going to follow. If an 11 month person would get 3,600 if they're attached to the schedule. Most of the staff that is certified is attached to the schedule. I'll give you an example of our assistant superintendent. He is on contract. So he will be, so his no matter what you do to the schedule, his salary won't change unless I present it like this and you vote on it. Um, th those increases right. are in it. That's why I have to say that to you is I do want you to understand, you know, even though he's twelve months, his will be thirty three hundred, where principals will get thirty nine hundred. So we do want to make that clear. There's my, sorry, I, I needed somebody you were the most obvious one. You were here. Um, okay, in instruction, um, now in, in operating, well, actually, in, uh, when we're staffing too, there's something we have to um, work under, and it's called the RAMP, and it's a federal mandate. It's called Resource Allocation Methodology Plan. We have to establish our RAMP, and that's basically the rules to how we allocate our resources to each school so that it is considered equitable. So like all the elementaries, based on the number of students they have, they get so much money per category. Like they'll get so much for instructional supplies, so much for people services, and, and it can change by grade band. So a high school is typically more expensive than elementary. So all the K-4 schools have been given the same amount per pupil based on the current rolled up students for next year. That way we capture what we think is the correct number. This also requires us after the first 20 to 30 days of school to go back, recount students. If I've allocated, I know one of the schools had 576 students at this time. If they have 580 at the end of our first month, I have to amend their budget. I have to give them more money per student based on that allotment we set. It also goes the other way. Before, if we had this situation, we would quite often give a school, if they had a lot more students show up than we expected, we would give them more money, we would reallocate. But we usually did not take money away. But based on the ramp, if their numbers go down, 
we have to follow that too. So if it goes down, we either have to ask for an amendment from the state or we have to adhere to the rules that we set for ourselves. So this will be the first real year that we've had to do it. Um, we did a, 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 a mini test last year on our staffing. We a lot staffed it, a lot, all the staff this way, so you may have a uh, grade level that's one teacher to 20 students. <coughs> They'll go in and test the average. Um, this will be the first year that they truly test it. We did some kind of testing last year, and we were, we were in good shape. Some of the things are a little confusing of what you do count and what you don't. <laughs> And those were the ones that kind of caused a, a little wavering. We have a lot of staff that travels to multiple locations when it comes to PT and OT, um, uh, different kinds of therapy in particular. You have to actually assign based on the segments they serve and the students, the percentages, and it all goes into the CPI and we pull it out and test it. So it's a little, it was a little harder to do than we thought. And we did really well in most areas. We typically had maybe more staff than we should have. Um, we had three places, I believe, that um, we were kind of on the line, but you've got a percentage range. You can go above and, or below, and I believe we stayed, uh, I'd have to check the federal programs, but I believe we stayed within that band on all of them. Um, but this year will be the real year. This is a real test, so we kind of, we have to stick with what we propose in that schedule, or we have to amend the schedule. So um, we're still working on the ramp. That's how we put this together. So depending on whether this budget is okay, then we'll finish the ramp next week, and it has to be submitted by July 1st. So you know, there's, there's a process here that we have to go through. Does that kind of make sense? So we're not just randomly saying, no, you get this much money and you get this much money, and I don't care how many students you have. It really is a plan, um, and it does make it very equitable unless you have a something really different like an aging school. So we've been able to take that and deal with it with SPLOST and m and We were able to pull those things out, but you have to identify them and pull them over here and say we're not using these in our account. So, um, but anyway, that's how we put together this budget. And that's why it's broken up into all the different pieces it's broken into. You'll see every school has an allotment, and, and you're going to see numbers that have gone down significantly. And let me explain why. We had a double textbook adoption last year in, in operating. It was a $900,000 adoption. We don't have that this year because that was a, a very expensive venture. And they, I think our staff has been thrilled with it. They were able to get their science and social studies kits and workbooks and books. And I think they've been very pleased. This year, um, we had a very limited adoption. We needed some additional materials at our JMS, our new JMS, our 5-6 school in fifth grade. After last year's Science and Social Studies, they had a need that came up that was, I think it was $14,000 for next year um, that we have addressed, um, and it's in this budget. Um, the PJ and PHS did an adoption for vocational and foreign language, and drama, dramatic writing. And so all those textbooks are in here. They equate for those adoptions, to, for the vocational, dramatic writing, drama, and um, I mean that's culinary arts, ag, anything they needed um, was $110,000 for both schools. So where we had 900,000 last year, you know we're down less than 120. So there's where a large reduction came. Um, a change from FY18 to 19 was now we're contracting our substitutes. And we have now, since that is an operating cost instead of a salary, that has gotten pushed down into the schools, and that was fun this year. Um, because we, that's not the way we do it. I mean, you're not going to always have one person out because you have 500 students and you have one and a half because you're 750. You know, you don't know what staff is going to have to be absent. You can plan professional learning, but you can't plan maternity leave. And we have a lot of that. Um, so we have evenly distributed that, and it is outside the ramp parameters. But um, I won't say our attendance was any better or any worse. It held about the same. Um, if you're wondering, did it make a difference? I was doing it in-house versus outside. Um, it's a little more expensive to send it outside, but then we don't have staff handling so much of it. Our office handles in finance, we are handling a lot of it now. Where 
the schools are not headed to, the bookkeepers at the schools are not headed to do the leave part as much. They do have to handle it, but not to the extent that they did. No more, it's not completely eliminated that last minute call in, I'm sick, because the, it's a, a web-based program. You have to have a cutoff. You know, you can't have somebody call in 30 minutes ahead of time and say, I'm not gonna be in a class because we can't have class abandoned. So then they have to call the school and a person has to physically get on the phone and take care of that. But you don't have three hours the night before or phone calls coming in at midnight that you're having to deal with. And I think most of the bookkeepers and leave, the people who take care of leave have been real pleased with it. If you're hearing anything otherwise, let me know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty positive the teachers are pleased because they sign in. I need to have sick day next Thursday. It goes to the uh, administrator. It gets an approval and it sends it out and opens it up to all of our subs. Our subs go out there, grab the days they want, and it's filled. So they show up and there's a check and balance on making sure how they can pay. A little longer process than that, but that's the short version. Does that kind of make sense? Um, but each school is allotted um, a certain amount of money based on their pupils. Um, all of those budgets by location are pages three through 34. Now I'm not going to go through all of these pages. I'm going to let y'all. We send it to the school. The principal meets with his, his or her staff. They put these budgets together and they send it back to me. I go through and look for things that don't qualify, should be handled through another department, seem out of think cost wise I ask the questions I kind of do the troubleshooting and we may go back and forth several times but then it winds up in this format but they all adhere to the allotment that we assign um, and if they need furniture it goes through even over SPLOST if they need technology it goes through SPLOST um, so those are the things they forget sometimes oh yeah if you need if you need five computers for that you send it over here and uh, so we just we try to take care of all the cleanup ahead of time Special Ed is a tested uh, uh, piece of the ramp, so we do have it pulled out. They earn QBE funding, and uh, they have subs in there too, so we have the QBE funding at a minimum, plus their subs in there to take care of uh, Special Ed. Vocational is a separate, separately tested category. Um, Pre-K is actually a grant, and then a little local, there's a federal piece and a state piece. Um, and alternative ed can be tested. So you'll see all these different programs. If it does not fall in one of those programs, it winds up in other programs. And that's something like um, ESOL, ELL will fall into that. Um, our um, North Star program, if they need materials, um, they can, they're, they're coded in that other program so that we can keep up with those expenditures and we know what we spend. What else? And any new grant that comes in if it has not previously been assigned may fall into that category. So overall, on page three, it is an increase in instruction of 1.08% or 300, $347,340 for the year. Now that's $3,000 increase plus the local, a couple of extra pair of pros. Um, all the instructional, the textbook adoption, which also has to be brought to y'all for approval, the materials due in June. Um, salary benefits, um, one thing that helped us with this, oh, all step raises, all certificate uh, changes, I have a whole bunch that just hit my desk uh, today, or yesterday. Um, all, anything that has to do with direct classroom instruction in their classroom is in this budget. Is this the non-certified raises in your response? Yes. Absolutely. Every single Which one. Which does cost? Um, I had somebody actually bring something in on, on one piece. I had everything except one little section together. Salary wise, it's about 290000 just for salary for all non certified. Non certified are not where, where most of the cost, most of the expenses. How much was the local certified portion? Well, I would have to calculate the local certified. Now, because I need clarification on local certified. 
the local, the just the increase? Just, just the increase, yes. How many locals are by? How many? We've got, for next year, we're going to have, see, we have, I have employees. We're going to have about 620 employees, but it's only about 610 positions. We have a couple that are split in pieces, maybe a 49 and 50%. Um, so it's going to be, I'm going to rough it just a little bit here. It will be salary wise, it's going to be a little over a million two. I know with benefits, all certified, we're running a little over a million and a half. The state gave us 1.2, we got 1.2 in extra revenue, 420. But part of our problem, we lost $200,000. We were held harmless at midterm, but we lost 49 FTEs on our last count. So that hurt us. So they, we were not. They did not take it back for this year. Um, another thing that's happening, just so y'all know, because I know it's in the news, um, they're doing something, I'm not really sure why, but State Health is having a holiday in June where our QBE money, they're going to withhold what we're going to owe them for our certified staff members, our side of their State Health. It's $945 per person for one month. <coughs> And they're not going to charge us. They're going to hold the, what we're going to owe them for certified. And then they're not going to charge us for the non-certified. Just for June. What's the catch? There's none. Except that it's going to be fun making that work in payroll. It's, it's a lot of work to, I mean, you have to zero out benef that benefit and then bring it back. And that's what they told, how they told us to handle it. Take it completely out of your system for one month. When it comes to June, July, and August, we run those three payrolls two days apart. So that means pulling it out, running payroll, putting it all back in, checking it and making sure it's right because it affects anybody on state health, and then balancing and making sure it's right when you run July and August. Um, but they're going to withhold our certified staff portion out of our QBE, which adjusts when we enter what we earned for the year. So I'm not sure how that's coming across on QBE. For me, it, it causes my books to potentially be harder to read in the, in the future or tomorrow. When you, I, I don't know how they're going to want us to book that exactly. So, I'm really. What was curious. their purpose behind that? I, I was just asking what was their purpose for asking us to. Are you're asking with, him to have a rationale. Yeah. Oh, you, that's why you're laughing. <laughs> Silly because there isn't. Did they give one, or they just say this is what we're doing? <clears throat> they have a reduction in the state health uh, cost to the state. So they try to uh, take a one month and pass it along and give it to us. They've never done this before. No, they have not. Ever. I've been here 19 years. And so first. it was... When it's supposed to be in, in look like it's supposed to be helping us for yeah. a month? It, well, you know... And it will. It, it will. It, and it was something right after an election, but uh, usually right before elections. <laughs> Remember, they used to give out the $300... Uh, the $300 Teacher Bonuses cards. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. And so I'm mean, card. Mm -hmm. card. But we had heard in, in the process of the budget being passed at the state level, we kept hearing that there was going to be a 1% state health benefit reduction. But when the numbers were going through, it really didn't look like there was a reduction. And I kept seeing consistent numbers, and we haven't been notified of a change in, in what we have to put in. So we were really curious, that, you know, I kept looking for 1%. I'm suspecting that this, this, is, is, the, this, is, the 1%. <laughs> this is part of that. Yeah. Um, although that 1% was supposed to be for next year, this will fall in FY19 because doing it in June, every single staff member, every salary in June is for FY19. So what that does is that we won't spend that money. So. This is some of these instructions have come down this week, so um, I haven't had a chance to find out how many non-certified staff members we have because they have to actually currently be taking state help, and then we will net, or um, we should net, get not spend whatever we would have spent it. So $945 per non-certified person 
but they're going to withhold the certified part. So, but they don't know all of our certified people. I mean, we don't earn every single certified person. I'm, so I'm a little curious as how this is going to work. And, and, and so I'll share when that's done how much money we did save with this. So we should save, you know, we could, could potentially save a couple hundred thousand dollars. Now, when they do that in June, you know, we don't have kids in the classroom anymore in June, and they didn't tell us until the last couple of weeks. So, um, if we spend money now, it's just on M and O, transportation, getting the buses. You know, when they come back in the shop, maybe buying fuel, um, things in the central office. We can't really buy instructional things with that. But um, when we get further into this, you can use it as rollover, and that's what's going to be something you're going to hear from me in shortly. Going back to the uh, <coughs> certified staff, the, the raise to certified staff for us is about 1.2 million, or 1.7. Certified salary and benefits is a little over 1.5. 1 1.5. 1 so just we're going to get about 1.2. Now that's total revenue. That's not just for that staff. initiative. Okay. That is because we're keep in mind we're doing a out of that um, one and a half million is our local part too. We got what about 375 certified staff? 363. 363, and it, I know it's not. It's going to be in the ballpark, but you're looking at probably about a 110, 115 thousand dollars for our $300 portion. So, so the 1.5 is the state and the local. Yes, both of them together. Yes. So about one. Well, so about, about 110, 115,000 well, Keep in mind, everybody's not a 10 month person. It's not everybody's not right. a 3,300. Right. You got a few of those that are 11 months and 12 months. Yeah. So it, it, it's a, I, I shot it. I said 1.2 because it's pushing it. Um, but but we we can so have salary and benefits around 1.2. 1.2 would be just salary. Just salary. So so but. We actually were positioned kind of in, in a nice little place because we are, don't have that double textbook adoption. Um, we did run that through local, uh, just so you know this. In the future, if the need were to come up, our SPLOS language allows us to buy textbooks out of SPLOS. You cannot buy subscriptions like a web-based subscription, but you can uh, unless it, it unless it makes the system go. That's a whole other damn it, but. There are certain criteria that you do have to meet, but we are allowed to. We chose to do it out of general fund because we, we could. And um, so that actually opened the door for us. That helps us with the raises. I think we can sustain it. Um, I, I know I've got several more things to go through here, but just to kind of get cut to the chase a little bit. Um, our estimated revenue, based on what I know from the county on the digest, um, I was still conservative based on what I understand and with our budget here um, and what we're asking for. It actually, our revenue is going to be short, just shy of $400,000. That does not include the savings from this state health issue. I do, looking at our books right now, I think we'll have more than enough money left in this year to cover the shortfall. And that would be my recommendation to the superintendent is that we just roll that money right into the next budget and we're allowed to do that in fact they like to see us do that um, we may have a little more than that uh, to roll over we have a limit of 15 percent of uh, the current expenditures budgeted for this year um, so we've got a little room on our 15 percent but I don't, I'll have to come back to you later whether or not we need to designate some money. Um, but we would have, I feel sure we're going to have plenty to roll over to cover that shortfall. Um, and two, since we don't know exactly how the digest is going to come in, if my estimate is low, that will be another offset. Um, that right now, uh, intangible tax, real estate transfer tax, we're making money on those because people are buying and building. Um, People are selling. Our Tabit looks 
nice. Y'all you know, see cost <coughs> revenue that comes in. Um, things are, are moving and growing and, and headed in a positive direction, so that helps us. So um, we really don't, it does not, our forecast does not have many more students. Um, we're not asking for many more staff. I like I said, the <coughs> pros and a couple of things that uh, Dr. Wilson talked to you about today. Um, but um, overall, I mean, we're, we're in good shape. We can pull it down, and I think we can sustain it. That was my biggest concern in right. mind with food service was sustaining it once we get past this year. And just to remind y'all, we actually, this year, this current budget, actually, we were budgeted, uh, was it 900000 that was okay. short. Oh, yes. Uh, so, it was 908. Yeah. And, and we've been fine with that. And we'll come out. Um, we feel really, really comfortable with the four hundred thousand dollars. And what we do to balance it is on that final sheet that y'all approve. That when we take it into a board meeting, we'll have our fund balance at the top, our projected fund balance, because we won't be closed at this point. So it's projected. And our, what we project our revenue, our expenditures, and then what we think we'll have at the end. Um, so our bottom line, what our fund balance will be. Do you know roughly when the last time? Certified or non certified staff got to raise this sustainable? Certified staff has been good gracious. <laughs> that that was seven seven over, I was going to say, I, was gonna say I, don't, I know it's been one? over seven. Yeah. Eight. Well, what they've done is they played with it and they've <clears> given <throat> the system some money, but they never changed the salary schedule, and systems have used it to give bonuses. Right. But not consistently changed. I don't remember the salary schedule being changed since Zell Miller did it. It's been a long time. Non-certified, mm -hmm. as, as a whole, I don't know the exact number. Well, I'm trying to think if non-certified have gotten. You might have an area like we did the bus drivers. We did two dollars an hour last year, and then did their longevity. You know, we're going to continue that. Right. Um, that was that was huge. That was the largest by far that we have that we have done probably since I've been here. Um, I was just calculating some some pair pro information that I remember how much they made when I started working here. Um, there's no way they got, ever got a dollar an hour since I've worked here, unless they did. I know that they had done one major salary overhaul right before I started working here. Um, so that would have been ninety nine two thousand ish. Um, but I don't. So they haven't received a rate as large and I would say years. most of the staff has not. Now you might have someone who swapped position to position or in a um, I don't when it comes to M and O, if they get a licensure or they have a cert certification or something like that, they sometimes we get a salary bump for those things. So yes, they may have, but paracros I know Paris have. That's still only uh, about forty bucks a week though, right? Oh a week, yeah. A dollar an hour. For the, the entire packet of races this year, cost <coughs> um, Do you have it broke down right. certified and non-certified? Um, or just well, non-certified? If you lose just salary straight up, it's um, let me see, let me tell you. It was all told, just the salary part is 1.7 million. I mean, that's that's a little. That's everybody. Mm -hmm. That's just the salary part. Just salaries is what 1.7 million. Um, because non-certified run under 300 thousand for what we propose. Your your thoughts on non-certified is the dollar is the safest for us to go around. Um, like I said, food service. She went through hers. She had done some salary adjustments in the past, and this doing seventy-five cents and a dollar is going to push her toward the upper end, upper middle end of the market. Um, and we're looking at Cherokee and, and some of the bigger counties, and of course the ones more our size. Um, she is not having retainage issues um, in her department. <coughs> I think I know that the bookkeeper secretaries at the schools have not received an increase like this. Um, and I, we are, we had two book, bookkeeping positions that have been open. We have gotten a lot of really qualified people. We had a really good pool. I helped both uh, principals kind of pick through some of the applications. We're having people want to apply here. 
So I don't think our rates are horrid, but I think we want to keep them once we train them because it costs a lot of money for us to train. And when I say that, I mean in time mm -hmm. because it's me, it's, you know, it's my bookkeeper at the central office, it's my AP person, it's, um, you know, sometimes we'll have to bring, I've got someone who was a former bookkeeper who helps us audit a couple of days a week sometimes. She'll help me, but we have to be hands-on with folks to train them. When you invest all that time into training them and they leave in a year, you've lost more than just the salary mm -hmm. of that person. Then you go through that whole training process again. So I would really like to see us be able to retain ours. I also like to see us just like, you know, we brought one of the bookkeepers up here. She's starting Monday um, full time with us. Yay. She's kind of been going back and forth. But I like bringing people in house. So if we hire a qualified person at school to be a bookkeeper, it is natural to then, when positions open, that they progress and you know your staff and you know their abilities. So being able to do that, you've got to pay enough to make them want to stay with us. So I think this is going to be a big help with that. Um, that we're able to get more qualified people because um, we do have we have had a lot of people go oh that's what you pay uh. our only other thing is that some of the positions are not a full year um, and that's kind of the nature of the beast of the school system so but I think it's it's needed I think it's needed our data clerks we lost, we've lost a data clerk we've lost several over the last few years to have qualified people come in that's not a simple job either I mean we have we have certain people with teaching certificates being our pair pros. Um, we know it's a stepping stone, but you still need qualified people. If you don't pay, you're not going to get the most qualified people. And, and I think that's what we need to have in here. A pair pro. If you can bring a certified teacher into a pair pro slot, that is just that much better for our kids. But you have to pay a decent wage to get those. People. What are our pair pros hour? hourly wage comparatively speaking to the counties surrounding us. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> you um, can give me that dollar later. Now, now, when it comes to really large counties, I'm just going to tell y'all, it's harder for us to compete. Oh, and I have to get a magnifying glass. Um, let's see. Sometimes i got a lot more than I ask for when I have to focus, too. Um, most of these came across as annual salaries, but some of them, and most of these do not include any raise they may be doing this year. Um, this is 184 days for paras in a close by county. They start at 12-8. Uh, we for the year. Mm -hmm. Where right now we are at we're at 12-1. So this will put us above this county. Um, I don't want to call too many names. So, um, I look at most of this stuff on my computer, so I can't even focus on that. Well, that's not what I want. Um, I, a competitor county, um, they depending on your um, education, it your pay changes. If you have high school diploma, you start at uh, 10 18 an hour, and see, we're not even to $10 an hour. But if you have a college degree, $13.69. And that's direct competition. Um, we have our pair of pros in here seven hours a day. There are some systems that do seven and a quarter, seven and a half, and there are some that do eight. Now, they have them doing morning duty, afternoon duty, things like that. So, and that's something we talked about a little we bit, did. too, is should we. Bring them in eight hours a day because I know I that is. They're already here eight hours a day. We so none of our pair pair pros are now a clerical pair pro in a certain type of position. No, I don't think any, they're all seven. Well, I think if it would be economically feasible for them to be there a longer day, yeah, I think I know from my experience that would make life a whole lot easier for a principal that's trying to assign duties and do things. That is something. You really can't use your pair pros for those extra duties because you go over their hours. Um, that is something that it has come up over and over and over again. Um, and some, I'll give you, the high school doesn't have as many pair pros as the elementary um, because they, for the most part, they have special ed pair pros. Uh, but you have special ed pair pros that go meet the bus 
and get students off the bus that need assistance. But then, if you have them come in this early to meet the bus, which might get there 30 minutes before actual school time starts, then they can't take them to the bus in the afternoon, and that same student still needs assistance, so they may have to get another person to go take that. So it is very much a schedule. I mean, it's, okay, you do this, you have, uh, I know in the past we've had parents who wouldn't take their lunch because it was easier just not to take it, and, you know, because even though they go to lunch with the kids, they get to have a break that won't take that break. So, I mean, we've got staff that's willing to go above and beyond, but I know it is very hard to schedule folks to take care, you know, to do things like that. But it is simply as getting a student off of us and on. Well, the teacher needs to be in the classroom because the other 25 kids are gonna show up in the classroom. So, I mean, you get into some logistical things like that, and it can't just be one person. You know, you can't send your floater para to meet all the kids that may need, you know, assistance. So we do run into that quite a bit. Your messages, you would add five hours a week to each of them. If, if the system wanted to do that, yes. Do you know how many uh, parents there is now? 72. 72 parents. I would certainly like to see the numbers on that to see if that would be economically feasible for us to do that. We can do that. I think it could help them out at the school level. Mm -hmm. We could afford it. Well, even though we have something uh, Dr. Wilson, you know, recommended last year that each school have a floater para in the office that can, you know, if, you, if the teacher gets sick and needs to leave, gets an emergency phone call, has to come out, you still have to send a staff member in there, and the sub's not going to be just standing there waiting, so you send whoever's in your office. Um, different situations, I do know over and over we've heard this, and Dr. Wilson, having been a principal, I'm sure he saw this many times where you get a bond and, and, and a jungle um, what would the average, just on the average, pair of ten? Well, the beginning base pay now will be ten sixty if this is approved. So, so if you get so, an average of eleven. All right. Well, you use eleven dollars an hour. It was, It would be about 140, 143,000 if we did every single para in the system. I think that would be well worth the money. And that, and then, yeah, that's just salary. That's not being a fifth. I think it would be a good expenditure because it would help the, the building level principal have some more flexibility to make sure their students are covered at all times. I have received, a, I mean, and in the process of putting the budget together, we do get a lot of feedback that y'all might not always hear, but I do try to pass it along when I do. But I do get a lot of, I, I can't do so-and-so, I can't get this schedule. It, it's really, but they'll work, they work it out, but um, there are times they have to get a sub to this come is, in. You know, just put you on the spot, do you think we could afford something like that? As long as y'all are good. This is the worst case. Okay. This is the worst case scenario. If we don't have enough money left at the end of this year to cover what we're talking about, I hit our 15% fund balance. That's our savings account. The only thing we don't want to do is get in a situation where we cannot sustain what we're doing. Our number of pair pros has increased. Um, we were running, we over the last couple of years, we've picked up about 10. Um, but, you know, certain situations like when we took over DOVA, um, you know, you've got your certified staff, but, you know, there's nobody to answer the phone. Right. There's nobody to run a purchase order. You know, there's no one to, um, if, if you need to order paper, I mean, they, we're trying to help here, but when they move to the high school, you know, it, it's a separate building, and we do a lot of things digitally, so we're trying to make it as easy as we can, but Sometimes, it's like I said with our department, I said sometimes you've got to have a body. You've got to have a human being to do certain things because you, the teacher's job is to take care of the kids. Let us do the paperwork, you know. Let us in the, in the back room do the paperwork. Um, would, you, would you like us to, would you like us to talk to the folks who this would, the principals and special ed especially, because most of our paras are special ed parents and ask them if this would benefit them if we extended that an hour a day. I think 
investigate it. We, we can do that. Uh, let me back up. I'm just looking at the numbers real quick. Uh, send two pair of pros and adding a half an hour a day. No, an hour. Seven. 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 and a half to eight and a half. No, no, eight, no. they get paid seven. They they're on paid site. Seven. Yeah, they're on site seven and a half. So are we gonna make them be there eight and a half? If you pay them for if you pay them for eight, they have to work eight. If you pay them for seven and a half, they do not get a duty free lunch at that point. Then. Parents don't get a duty free lunch. I know. Lunch. Even if they go to lunch with the kids and eat, they still get. They still. Do, I know, but yeah, I mean, if we just paid them eight and they worked eight, then they would not get a duty free lunch. They would incorporate their lunch with their kids. We let them have them. Oh, I know. <laughs> you want to make them? <laughs> no, I was just saying instead of making them work eight and a half hours, they could work eight hours and not have the duty free lunch. Right. But we could. Uh, it, it would be a. It would be a, I, I would be a problem with that. So. Are they working seven and a half now and only getting paid? No, yes. they're there. So they get thirty well, minutes. They're on site, off. but they're they on do. On site, get, but they're not supposed to. Be but I mean, if they, they technically can leave the building we, and leave the property for 30 minutes. Yeah, no, nobody does. And see, like, we have, we do have some that are on site eight hours, but they do, because of the schedule they have to keep, to, to get a student off the bus and on the bus, they'll take an hour lunch. And if they have an hour lunch, they can leave, they can leave campus, but they don't pay them to do that. I mean, what are we looking at? Right. Raising their pay eight and a half. Uh, right now, start. base pay right now is nine sixty. We would go to ten sixty. Right. So. Can we also see that at eleven? Pardon? Can we also see that at eleven? This is the thing. When, when, whatever we choose to do with the non-certified, you know, you have paras and you you have all these other positions, and they're kind of they're paid their hourly rate for the most part, and it's an opinion, but is set by responsibility level. Mm -hmm. So when you push the bottom end, you push them off. Right. So we have we, we went through and ran some numbers with fifty cents, seventy five, a dollar, a dollar half, two dollars an hour. Um, I thought my food service director was going to go nuts because she she ran she was so worried about the hundred and seventy six school days because she's losing over sixty thousand dollars in revenue, trying to make sure it works. What if we don't do it again next year? Da da da. So and actually what they're having to do, where we're going to wind up most of the, like the paras, we're going to go ahead, even though they're paid 180 days, and we're going to only have school 176, they're going to come in and they're going to do four training days. Mm -hmm. So their schedule is still 180. Food service is going to be a little different. She had to kind of massage that because she has people who are four, five, six, seven, and eight hours a day, and it has specifically has to be tied to what, who, how many you serve in that lunchroom. So she, and I mean, it's still a little bit of a moving target until we have the kids here next year. She had to, instead of giving them four kind of free days, she's only doing two. So they'll have two extra training days. She said she could not afford four. But what she did is she was able to bring their salary up enough. The state gave them a 2% raise. Now, and it's, it's not truly a 2% on all of our staff. But she made sure they got in excess of a 2% raise. And even though we're calling it 75 cents an hour, they're going to be, that's what some of the stuff she was bringing me. I said, that you need to write all this down for me because. Um, the other thing not, is. We only have 600 and something employees. So. If we raise the starting pay to $11 an hour, it would, uh, because they are on a salary schedule, you know, You have an issue with those that uh, were a step or two ahead of that, and now they're not. Okay. And so you may have to do the whole schedule. Walmart yeah. Andy's is paying twelve dollars an hour. So these people are touching our kids. You know, yeah. they're, they're touching their lives. Yeah. I will say the only it's difference. Kind of sad. I is. mean, and to keep in mind, mm -hmm. some of the I know, I know what you're talking about because I know Walmart has a sign up fifteen dollars an hour, but you'll never get more than twenty hours a week. You'll never get a single benefit. You won't get health insurance. We do offer a lot of those things. Yeah, we are right. much more stable. We have a fixed schedule, other than snow. Um, <laughs> they like that. Um, we do. You do kind of have to look at both sides. Um, <coughs> you know, we contribute. Um, I mean, they're going to get a great. If they're on TRS, you got a fantastic retirement plan here. 
but you got to hang in with us for a minimum of 10 years to vest. You can take yours, but not ours. But if you hang in there, I mean, you can walk out of here after 30 years or age 60 with a decent retirement. A lot of these places, they'll flash up so much per hour, but you'll never get more than 20 hours a week because they're not going to pay you benefits. And they'll tell you two days ahead. I, I get, I hear from people who apply at Walmart or work at Walmart, and they'll say, I finally had to quit because I couldn't get, they give them eight hours a week at $15 an hour. But they say, I can't live on that. I can't, I can't make that work. So one thing about us is we are stable, and we do have benefits, and we, we do try to take care of our staff. Um, Annual salary for a pair pro right now starting out is 10. Right now it's. Um, 960. It's about 12.1. About 12.1, and remember, we're giving we're giving all them a dollar raise so anyway. It's just shy of 13. So 13, but the uh, actual expense of that pair pro for us to hire them is is about thirty thousand dollars with the dollar an hour raise. Okay. So you got you got to capture both sides of it. And, I don't have a problem in the world doing as many raises as we can, as long as we can afford it. Um, I, I wish we could give them all two dollars an hour, but we could not. I mean, you see, you hear where we are with a dollar an hour, so we'll have a little shortfall. I think we'll have enough left over to cover that. We could we could push if we want to check on the dollar an hour. I mean, uh, adding an hour to the pair of we could, yeah, well, that's. Uh, and I know Dr. Wilson, you and I had talked about it one time, and I think Christy Bone had talked to you about, you uh, about doing something else, doing a little more for special ed. There are the ones that are in the uh, medically fragile, uh, they're having to do tube feeding and change diapers and do all those. Um, we do have, I know there's not very many of those. Right. But um, I never did get a request, but we have talked about it several times, so I can pursue we'll, that. We'll do that. Um, and, and for everybody else, just so you know what we're talking about, um, in the special ed area, there are parents that have to have a little higher ability um, when it comes to, or look, they have a higher responsibility because they are changing diapers. They may be um, doing a medical procedure of some sort or have medical orders they must follow. Mm -hmm. They may be in a situation where they can never leave that student's side without someone else taking over. It's not a walk and run to the restroom really quick and leave them here uh, or they'll be okay for a second. It is you never leave this student. You never leave this student. And it, those are the situations where they are really tied to and Ms. Bone had asked if we could potentially do something. I just never got a request from her, but I'll be glad to follow up on that. Um, and there are very few of those. Um, the ones that you're talking about that are changing diapers and feeding tubes and stuff. <coughs> and, and, and it would be, I would have to rely on her for who she thinks would qualify for that. Um, there are different categories in SPED, and um, she would have to identify the ones that are in positions where um, that is beyond my purview, but I'm sure she'd be happy to let us know. And and two, you know, give me a little more information. Um, is it just some school systems that are giving the pair pros different levels of pay based upon their their education? Education. That's not all of them. I'm guessing that's Cherokee. Actually, no. Really? Uh, Cherokee may do it too, but that was not Cherokee that I was looking at. Oh, okay. Um, you have uh, Gil Gilmer, right now it's 10.40 an hour for Paris to start. So our raise would raise them above Gilmer. Gilmer's direct competition. Um, Cherokee's not a direct competition? They're, they are, but their system. But we just can't afford to do what they do. I won't say, I won't always say that because we are very competitive with them in some areas. But in some areas, like, um, I'll give you an example, bus drivers. With us, you're going to drive between four and six hours a day. With them, they'll have you driving eight hours a day. And, and we they are pay not. more, too, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yes, once we have our $2 an hour raise, they, they turn around within two weeks and gave their notes, too. I was not happy about that. And they pay their teachers right. more, too? We really compete with them. We're, we go head on with them up until about 21. But they extended their schedule beyond ours. And that's where they get us, is the, the 20 to 30 year teachers. That's a 
pretty big competition because that's when you're talking about retirement years and you want the highest you can get. Them. Yep. And of course, I mean, and that's the only thing is, you go to their high school, you got 2,000 kids. You go to ours, you have 1,400. You go to their elementaries, and they are they are typically much larger than ours. So I mean, it depends on the atmosphere you want. I think I think we've got some great folks, and we have people who've left us, gone to other counties, and come back, mm -hmm. and said, you know what, I really like it here, and and. I know for a lot of teachers, pay is not their biggest issue, that's but we we're glad. Oh, we to, wouldn't be teachers. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but we're glad to see it when they come back. Um, you know, because I think they're a little more satisfied when they come back. Oh yeah. If you come back. Just, um, on, the, on, just on the average of that one, you come back. Pay more. And you have to pay more. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now, um, so what I'm what I'm hearing, and let me I'm going to make some notes really quick, so I just don't forget. Okay, so we we're, we're going to look at uh, taking paras for seven hours a day, to eight hours a day. That would help their pay a little bit too, without increasing the actual. Um, I do know one concern when we have. One thing that has been brought up before when we have talked to the parapros about do you want to go from seven hours a day to eight hours a day is if they have young children or children at another school is being able to drop off and mm -hmm. pick up. That, I know that has been a concern before. Um, and then we're going to look at the SPED, special, I, I, I don't know what to call them, specialty paras with Ms. Bone. We call them angels. Angels. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then were there any others we wanted, anything else we wanted to? I think it's a good start. Um, Could we give the parents that have that need to drop their kids off, could we give them the option of not going to eight hours if, it was, if they get an approval by their principal? They're the ones that could be losing the money, but I'd rather they be happy here and they take care of their kids, or they could write a show. That makes you look okay. Realistically, I mean, I know at times that I, I can get issue it, yeah. in some circumstances, but as far as from school to school, they call the same boat with any teacher that has a child in that school. So mm -hmm. yeah, we, we will still take care of that. That's okay. not that's not the issue. Well, there we the do shuttle still, takes care of. Yeah. I think we do still have shuttles that we run do. from school to school. Okay. And I, I know, is it still that if they go to the after school program, the parents aren't charged as long as they just come For the, straight? From like the first thirty minutes yeah. or so. Yeah. yeah. Is that all the all, all the things I'm going to kind of pursue there? Um, I think we will. I'm going to predict based on what I've heard so far is we're going to get a positive response on both issues. <laughs> so I'll bring you. Some I'd be real surprised if you didn't get a positive response. <laughs> um, I, 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 I will pursue that. Um, think about scheduling too because I'm thinking third people are going to be next week. Um, okay, do y'all have any other questions about instruction? I'm not going to go through each school individually. Please do peruse what they do. These, this is, we give them the, um, autonomy to do what they need to in their school and make decisions within what is, what is appropriate to be spent in these categories. Um, most of them do a lot of similar things, but if one wants to go outside and buy a certain novel set to help their curriculum, that is, that is up to them. As long as it's appropriate for the category, and the, the money looks like it's okay, um, we, we will give them that autonomy. Um, but they also, if one, if they are very specific with what they ask for, and they change to a different brand or a different company, they have the right to do that. Um, we don't stop them if they just want to, oh, we like this chair better than that chair. Um, so um, as long as they stay within their budget, within the category. Okay. Um, typically like the the, uh, how it differentiates between like the different elementary schools, for example, as an easy example. How does that, what is the mindset when we all have their budgets? Or di their total budgets are different. Is that based on student population? Yep, that's, that's, it. that's mm -hmm. all it is. Okay. And then um, I get, I, like I said, with the subs, because you can't predict how many subs you're going to need at that location, they're given the same amount of money for the, sub, the contracted subs. Um, they, that used to never be in their money. It was separate. It was in salaries, and they, they don't see a lot of that. Um, but now it is down in their budgets. Um, but they are allotted instructional material, the same amount by grade band, 
the same amount per pupil and the only change and like I said I may have to come back after that first month and, and add to or take away but the numbers we're using were the actual rolled up numbers from this year so it should be very close uh, I'm not expecting any surprises I've, I've got to uh, apologize to Amy on this one because I totally did not get her the information <laughs> what? PJ band I mean, we need to increase the band instrument song. Okay. You gonna, you gonna share that with me? <laughs> yeah, I will. It's about thirty-six thousand what the band wanted, but we'll look at it and see. Okay. I kind of just. You know, Remind me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Well, we'll talk about that one. Okay. Well, they currently have. Well, they needed new instruments, and they, well, they wanted, not needed, uh, they, they possibly wanted some new instruments, and they listed them out, and it came to about 36000 We'll get with uh, the band director, Mr. Oob, and we'll uh, see what they need, and sometimes maybe not what all they want, but we'll, they do need some more instruments there, so we do need to increase that sum. We will review that. Maybe, maybe not 36000 for it. Instruments are so expensive. They are. I hate it when we have to buy two. <laughs> They're so expensive, <coughs> so expensive. But we do, and we do. We do have to replace instruments, and we do repair and maintenance to them every year. So, okay. I'm going to jump to page 35. This is the next section. Now, I have not seen this section before. This is called improvement of instruction. In it is most of our professional learning and technology. Um, their salaries of some of our technology staff um, and secretaries for like vocational, special ed, um, this is where curriculum falls. Um, the top section you'll see there's actually a decrease and it's because we had some movement that actually moved to another category that I've already presented to y'all and I said later y'all will see a decrease. Well here's your decrease. But down at the bottom under operating. Um, you're going to see, I'm going to talk about staff development first. We earn, uh, we get an allotment for staff development. Um, last year, we asked for some additional funds in excess of that uh, staff development money. And what we are earning for next year, I am going to have to get in and get some glasses, y'all. I can blow it up on my computer. We're earning about 113000 uh, plus another 2,700 specifically for principals. Um, because of the initiatives we have, and we still do have quite a few new staff members, um, the request is a little higher than that, but 152,000 of it is here. Now, what we have done in the past is you broke it into 2,210, which was non instructional, and then 2,213, which was instructional. We're not doing that anymore per the state. Now we do 2213 for instructional, and then, like for board members, wherever you're typically housed within the budget. So I've had to go into each section. So like board members are 2300. So is a superintendent and assistant superintendent. I had to take any staff development that <coughs> had to do with y'all and go push it into 2300. I'm 2500. Push it into mine. So since then, I have taken it was. Um, $79,000 and I spread it through the whole budget in all the appropriate places based on the professional development plan the superintendent has been involved in. Um, but most of the money you see here at, at $152,000 is specifically um, instructionally driven. So that means it's teachers, it's, it may be teachers, paras, it can be curriculum directors, it's something that has a direct Im impact on that classroom in instruction. So, um, the other area you see here is the technology department. I want you to flip to page 36 because he does have some increases he is requesting. <coughs> Most of this budget is um, very close to the same. The first line up there in contracted services, y'all have already approved. We have a, a new contracted technology position. So we did add that position up here, um, and he's already on board with us now this year. Um, the other area where there was a significant increase is in uh, web-based subscriptions. 
Um, there are there were some issues in the classroom that we had to address this year, and I'm actually going to come back to you in June and ask for several budget amendments in the current year, and one of them is for this um, this light speed classroom for forty five thousand dollars. I believe he talked all about it in a board meeting, and this is he's the tech geek guy. I may have to call him to give uh, better direction on this than I can give you. Um, but it was a change we had to make in order to have the technology that we currently have in our classrooms work properly with all the cameras and the video systems and the this and the that. So that was $45,000. We had not budgeted in this year. We were able to handle it up until this month. So I'm coming, I'll come to you and ask for an amendment. But he is going to have to incorporate it in the budget for next year in order to make all the technology we have all talk to each other and work like it should. If y'all have more, if y'all have specific questions about it, I will have to call on him to assist with this. Um, but it's about a ninety. Those two items are what make up about a ninety thousand dollar increase. Everything else is a normal wear and tear, maintenance. Um, we've got to replace these cords. We um, the repair of equipment that's out of warranty. Uh, we do. We still do contract with E-Rate. And, um, they help us out when we contract with them. We pay a little money here. But this is 10% of what we get. We'll get saved money somewhere else. It's typically something like our phone bill, our internet service, and it's for the county, so that can add up to big bucks. Um, any questions on technology? Okay. Um, now, the next few pages, 37 through. These are the categories that I had already presented to you. 37 through 40, 51. If I needed to change a salary for the salary increases we recommended, I've made the changes. If we needed to push that professional learning into a category, I have made those changes. The only other change I made is I did have to adjust, we had a late a uh, piece of information come in about some testing materials that were needed and I had to add, adjust the testing budget by $17,000. So other than that, those are the only things that have changed. But y'all have seen all these categories before, uh, but this is with all the salary changes. And that's media, general administration, which is um, the superintendent, his office and the board members, school administration, which is of course the school office, business services, which is my crew, maintenance and operations, transportation, central support, which is the rest of the central office that's not in my department or with the superintendent's crew, and then uh, other support services, and that's just our recent. Y'all don't have to come up with every question right now. I'm, I'm going to give y'all several weeks to think, <laughs> think about this and peruse this and as long as you need. And then when y'all are through looking at that, if you want to turn to page 52, we'll talk about special revenue. Um, page 52 is the summary page for special revenue. In special revenue, now this is everything outside of general fund. So this is debt service, which we have none of. SPLOST, all the federal entitlements, which is Title 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, Pre-K, GLRS, we're a fiscal agent for, right from the start, which is our Pre-K program out at uh, Hill City. Uh, in school food. So uh, this summary page shows the revenue, the fund balance, and the expenditures that we're proposing for next year. SPLOST is based on the approved projects that we have, and you're going to notice them. The dollar amounts look large, I want to remind you. Down here under transfer in, we have designated money that we're going to pull out of general fund to put over in that PJ project. So I have to budget it. If we're going to spend it, we spend it in SPLOST, 
and we transfer the money from general fund over into swastika coverage. Right now, what we anticipate is having a full five million of that before the fiscal year ends. Page 53 has more specific information about debt service and swaps. Um, in our capital outlay plan, we are going to, we, we think we'll completely pay for uh, PJHS phase one and a portion of phase two. Um, site work at various locations that have to do with buildings like DOBA and the sports fields. Um, voice over IP, voice, voice over IP, we have begun to introduce it into the county and we are going to continue that throughout the rest of the year, trying to get it at every location. Um, we are moving our server room and upgrading it. We, are, we have a video board we're actually in the process of working on right now. And other renovations, modifications, equipment, furniture, et cetera, um, as are in the plans that, that come through y'all. Y'all approve every SWAT project that comes through. In technology, there's a half a million dollars for servers, lab updates, replacements of Chromebooks, and other technology equipment. Um, that is a little smaller budget. He, the initiatives, we've gone through most of the major initiatives at this moment, and that he thinks this is all he'll need for next year. So the timing with that actually worked out pretty nicely. And then we do the 600000 for bus purchases so we can replace six buses. We always hope for bond money. We won't know that until we get to next year, but if we don't need to spend all that 600, we won't. Y'all have any questions on SPLOST before I go to the next slide? Okay. Um, the next page, which is 54, is uh, food service, school food. And um, this is her revenues, federal, state, and local. You know, when, when the state talks about giving uh, a 2% increase on uh, state revenue, I'm told most you get $60,000 from the state, and that's her prediction with a 2% increase. Just, just so you know, it was, it was 55 last year. Um, but she, she feels good about this with the raises she has proposed. Um, I see a typo on something. It is 75 cents uh, an hour increase on uh, her. Oh, I'm sorry. That's subs. I'm thinking about it. She is requesting to increase her subs by 50 cents an hour to 875 um, from 825 right now dollar an hour raise for bookkeeper and managers and then for the rest of the staff to 75 cents an hour raise. Schedule go from 25 to 30. Is that what you said? Right. The schedule go from 25 to 30. Is that what you told me? Yes. 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 <coughs> this is all uh, school food specific. Do y'all have any questions about school food? She, she was somewhat concerned, I will share her concerns about the year being 176 days versus 180. Um, and she was asking, are we going to repeat that next year? And of course, at, at that time, I did not have an answer for her, but um, she would like to know as soon as a decision is made on that school calendar for 21, just so she can prepare. How did the counties that go to 160 days manage to do that? The counties that go to 160 days, how do they manage to We do that? looked at, we, we pulled Murray because you know, they're at 160 and their salary, some of the salaries are, are way above us. So I'm, I'm, my assumption is they pulled the days down and raised the salaries, but. They did. Uh, okay. That, that's now, what it appears. To make sure no one lost any money in going to 100. So they did do but as far as their food service, because you say they only earn money if they're serving children. Yeah. So how do they earn their money? We're one, we're one of the few systems that do not pull from general funds to subsidize food uh, service. Okay. Most other systems yeah. have to take out general funds to subsidize where they go in the hole. I see. Okay. So yeah. Murray's probably has to be in the hole if they are only serving food 160 days. And that's what that Ms. Thompson tries to stay self-sufficient, and she also we tries appreciate to appreciate that. Yes, we do very <laughs> much. Um, but she also maintains her fund balance, just like us. The state recommends a certain amount, and they're very specific with food service. But um, hers is two to three months, and she tries to keep really close to three months. You're not really supposed to go over, and they don't want you to be under either. But 
Um, but she's very good. She watches it every month and, and is very is meticulous with it and, and makes adjustments to purchasing uh, as needed. But um, she's uh, very conscious of that. So I'm very pleased. I think we've got somebody really good in there to take care of us. Not backtrack the sour skip. Okay. Does that that covers everybody, right? Like to go into thirty. Going to thirty. Going to thirty. Does that yes. cover everybody? Yeah, as long as y'all say that's okay. The only ones that aren't on that extended schedule that I can think of are monitors. They're just a flat amount. They've never been on the schedule because they're kind of a daily rate. We converted them into an hourly rate for payroll purposes, but they don't. They have never had that. If you stay a monitor for 10 years, you know, you get that $125 a year. Not really sure why, um, but that's the only category I can pick up. Bus drivers get a $50 a year step, all the other non-certified that are not uh, an administrator or supervisor are typically on the step where they get that $125 a year. Now, teachers, I mean, certified staff only go 21 years, right? And we see we've been at 25 uh, on most of most of the rest of them. Uh, bus drivers, you know, weren't until last year. Um, but so we're, we're going to pull them all up to 30. We only have we had 14 people who it will affect, and two of them are retired. So this year it's not going to hit a lot of folks, but it, it will eventually. Basically. Right. Okay, um, page 55 starts um, FY20 federal grants. Again, this is uh, Title I, which is um, academic achievement, improving academic achievement. Title II, which has to do with uh, professional development of our staff. Um, Title IV um, is an innovation grant. Title V, right now, we are not presenting because right now we have no information. They have not said. They have really given us nothing. They said they'll let us know in August if we are going to get it, so we can't count on that. So we, we, we're not going to pretend that we're going to. Uh, at the point that we do receive information and have a budget, uh, we'll come to you and ask for an amendment to add it. Um, GLRS, again, is a, a, we're their fiscal agent. Um, right from the start is our pre-K program. And right now it looks like we'll continue to have three classrooms out there at Hill City. Um, and then, of course, school food. But, the, of these grants, this is, I just wanted y'all to see on Title I, this is the verbiage that we have to do in order to get approval. Now, I am putting out there, we know this totals what we think we're going to get, it's what we've been told at the moment. Some grants we have not been given information yet, but they said you're going to have around the same amount. So we stuck to around the same amount, so we stuck to the initiatives that we were aware of. But basically, if anybody is a 12-month person in any of these grants, and some of them are, I have to present all these to you in order to be allowed to spend money in July for anything for them. So these are estimates. These will not be the final budgets, but they have not been created. Right now, I can see 2020 in the consolidated application, but there is not one dollar of money populated. So this, these are definitely estimates. Um, we will come back when we have information and have received approval from the state. One thing that will change significantly is Title I. We have applied to and been approved for something called consolidation of funds. That means you take some of your 100 instructional funds <coughs> and some of your Title I funds and you put it in a 150 fund. So you have 100 general fund, 402, you go and you dump them in this. And it's supposed to give you more flexibility. Right now, we don't have a lot of information on that. So we'll have probably a significant change with that. But I'll have to bring it all back to you to amend the budget once we, once we get everything. I also want to just call your attention to things that we have to do that's not necessarily inside the school system. If you look at Title I there on page 55, if you look at uh, the oh, object code 300 there, which is $17,720 for tutoring for Troy House and Aces. And then the $561 going down the page set aside for supplies for both of those two places. So. We are required to yes, a certain percentage of the Title I budget must be set aside for homeless, for N and D, neglected and delinquent. Um, there are requirements. Parent involvement has 
of a portion. You must meet certain minimum criteria. So you're going to see items. I wanted y'all to kind of see the verbiage because it's really interesting. Their budget is six pages long where others are a half a page. Um, but so you see how intricate this is. Um, it, it is not, not a simple item anymore. But this is the one that we're going to throw into another fund and, and make it even more fun. So, um, but, but this is what they're requesting at this time. Um, this, all schools are Title I with the exception of the high school. We are uh, able to do certain things and are sometimes required to do certain things when it comes to neglected and delinquent and homeless, even though they're at the high school. So we must serve them uh, no matter what age group they are. So Title I goes from 55 to page 60. Um, then 61 is our special education preschool grant and our special education flow through grant. Our flow through is the, the we call it 6B. Um, and it is direct directly, it must be for a special education who has a student who has been identified. They also do work with uh, Knights District Opportunity out in Tate. Um, that is another requirement. We, we must serve pre-K special ed students um, whether they're in our system or not. So a lot of people don't realize that. Even it is part of you're receiving federal money, so you must serve these students. Then skipping over to page 64, these are our federal CTAE grants. We have Perkins Plus Reserve and the Perkins Program Improvement. And they're relatively small grants, but they are federal and we must uh, introduce them to you. Page 65 is our Title II, Improving Teacher Quality. And Title IV, Student Support and Academic Enrichment. And again, some of these um, carry salaries and supplies and, and different things for 12-month uh, initiatives. So we must present them uh, and receive approval, either tentative or spending resolution in order to spend money on these items. Just also remind all of you, most of you probably know that uh, under special education, we are mandated to go out and find anybody two years old and older mm -hmm. that could qualify for special education services and provide those services to those children. And so, I mean, sometimes that, just that, finding the child mm -hmm. becomes mm -hmm. difficult. Is that in addition to the Babies Can't Wait program? Yes. Yes. Um, another thing we're required to do is, as part of Title I is we must notify all private <coughs> schools within a certain area yes. uh, that we can and uh, can offer services to them through Title I and if they respond and would like um, materials, tutoring, uh, you know, whatever the response is, <coughs> we must um, respond and, and quite often have to provide something. So these are kids that may not be in our system at all, but they're in Pickens County and it can extend beyond Pickens County in certain circumstances. So, you know, it's, it's not just our kids here. Um, we're required to reach out beyond uh, the parameters of, of the school system. One of the uh, qualifying things for pot of money for Title I, we also have to include uh, all homeschool children that never fill out a form that says that they're qualified, so that I automatically lowers our percentages to some degree. And so it's not necessarily true to what we're serving. We have around uh, 300 homeschool students. And, uh, Tony, but we just got a message from Special Ed that since March 1st, we have identified 53 more new special education students just since March 1st. That are at home? Well, that have been tested. Mm, here. I mean, that are already is what we were just told. No, they're not. These are 53 new special ed students going into our system. And we have 35 special ed pair pros. Back to that other question. But Tony's going to ask a few questions. I just changed my certificate to a retired <coughs> so I can get it. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. Okay, I'm going to flip back to page one now. Now, after all those things, we have all of that in this front page, in this summary page. 
like I said, you can look at the revenue versus the expenditures, and in the end, I have to make those balance, even if I have to pull it out of fund balance. So um, we will pursue the other issues that we've talked about. I've got three issues here, um, and if it's okay, do you want me to email the information to you, or would you like to meet again, or? I personally would like to meet again if it's convenient. But I think this is important. Okay. So we will meet again, kind of summarize the, what I can bring back. When, when, do you, um, when do you need the budget? When would you like to well, have the budget approved? One, well, at this point, once we get to the point where we're ready to do a tentative approval, um, before we do the tentative approval, we have to have two public hearings. They have to be a week apart. They cannot be in the same week. So, like, you can't do a Monday and a Friday. You have to do one this week and one the next week. So, I mean, they really want you to have them seven days apart. I know you can do a Friday and a Monday, but we don't have to cheat. We'll, we can do, do it properly. But we have to have them a week apart. So, if you like, by the end of June. Yeah, well, we have to have something in place by the end of June. We, have, we must have tentative approval or spending resolution and a lot of times I'll get a tentative and still get a spending resolution just because they argue at the state on what's proper but we will not do our final um, until after July 1st um, because we won't have the digest yeah, you we, can do really your final but we typically will wait for the digest because we'll do tentative millage then you have to run ads then we'll do final budget and final knowledge at the same time, just so we don't have to have so many meetings unless y'all you know, just like having meetings. No. <laughs> I'm good with that. But keeping in mind, if we were to shoot to do tentative approval on June 13th, that means that we have regular mm -hmm. We would have to have, you can do a public hearing on the day of the meeting. You can't. Because all you're doing is you're taking it, you're saying, here's our budget, and we, you're to listen to the public. We can do that. Yes. The problem um, we're going to run into is three of us are going to be in Savannah. Uh, next, oh. next week. Next That's Wednesday, right. Thursday, Friday, we're going. Well, now, I, I will say this. All board members are not required to attend a public hearing. Um, do you have to have a quorum? I believe so. It's a hearing. Yeah. I'll verify that. Because we you used to do committees. Um, when we did the finance committee, typically we would have the finance chair, superintendent, me, and a couple more people, and that was it. We did not we did not have support. But I will verify. There, I don't believe there's any verbiage that says there has to be. Okay. <laughs> so we let Peter do it. It's so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or we can uh, have Amy come and have it in Savannah, and uh, the ones that's not there, we can video conference in. Now, now, now. As much as I like Savannah. Well, when, if, you, if Steve wants to make to do the, here the... I'm not held in on that, but I would certainly love to have some interaction about that. Can you do that by next month? Okay. We're leaving yeah. Wednesday. Can you do it by next month or Tuesday? Okay. This is the only thing about these public meetings. Not, not yes. public meeting, I'm oh, talking about the... The call one, yeah. I can, I, this I can do okay. pretty quickly. What day did you say, though? What are words for everybody? I didn't know we're leaving Wednesday, so Brandy, we probably... Okay. Um, and I mean, I certainly don't have to be here for that meeting, but I met a Mountain Edge train Monday and Tuesday until about 3 o'clock, so I couldn't be here. Well, we could, I, could, I could be here probably by 5. We could, could do uh, Wednesday morning. We could do Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning would probably work very You right. can't do Wednesday morning. Okay. I'll, I'll be. I'll still be there. I do more time Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> I mean, we're leaving at eleven o'clock. Well, we are leaving. Uh, uh, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. 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 Well, we're all going to be uh, at the high school. I mean, I could be back in Cleveland by probably five o'clock Monday or Tuesday. This Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we'll get done. I, I mean, if that's convenient, okay. Monday, Tuesday, about five o'clock, I can bring it. Hold, hold the idiot. <laughs> because I have to, in order to do the public hearing, I have to advertise yeah, yeah, yeah. in the newspaper. Okay. 
So their deadline, I can probably get them to push to Tuesday at noon, but I won't get past that because now it's normally Monday afternoon. But if I tell them ahead of time, right. sometimes I can go ahead and get so it. Can we make the let's, uh, let's schedule the, the, the workshop, and then uh, if we need to, we can have a call meeting after, you know, Whatever. See, we can't get two public hearings in before the regular meeting. I know, but I'm going to have a call meeting later in the morning yeah. for that purpose of having the second public hearing and, and a call meeting to approve the uh, tentative approval of the budget at that time. Okay, so when do you want to meet next week? Because what when, it is, when, I have to get when that. When do you have the information available? I, I can have it. We'll take a break and come back at 6. <laughs> okay. well, I, 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 well, I'm going to tell you, the pair of pros, the number on, mm -hmm. I can go downstairs, I can tell you the pair of pro when Pair of pros, I think, that's the one with Lowe's. That's um, 134, 130. I mean, so that. that will make it a lot easier. I'm okay. Okay. okay, I was going to say the, the pair is the number I call that the 142,000. That's that's going to be pretty dead on. That's going to be. Really